get a picture of exit 32, that would have been critical. Sorry. Greg, I mean, are you even doing it? Do you know where we are, Greg? <laughs> Guys, did we use up all of our conversation already on the ride over? We talked about a lot. We're getting a lot of cover. A lot of cover. You can actually get some night footage here if I just stay near your yeah, <laughs> torso. Right, you know. yeah. Are we in? Oh, you're not supposed to technically camp here. Although that was the yeah. I just started mine. Yeah, dude. Lock. Let's lock it now. All Give right, it a good 12, old twelve eleven. That's pretty pretty close to being on time. Yeah. 12 11, We've gone exactly zero point zero. Starting at midnight uh, was was definitely pretty it was amazing and it was it, but it was hard all right we good we good it was definitely much harder than i expected i think like as soon as you get into it and it kind of wears off and then your world becomes a circle that is a headlamp for you know six hours and that six hours happens to be straight uphill for most of it all right it's 12 36 a.m we're out there. We're like, this This is when people get killed by bears. Like, this is it. 1.79 miles in. Yeah, shit, yeah, man. We lost Greg, but I mean, it's a great story. <laughs> What'd you say, Greg? It was unreal. It was hard. And I feel like the mental part of that, I wasn't as prepared, I think. Miles, and we've gained about almost 800 feet of elevation since we started. And it's been going for... Uh, Much better to start in the night than to end in the night, for sure. 1.30 in the morning. We've all done uh, Reach the Beach, right? So that's probably the biggest nighttime experience that I had before that. It's on a very different scale to be on that ridge line as compared to anything else I've done. Is this the top of Flume right here? Almost, yeah. Wow. It's at point one back there, yeah. There you go. I think we all met doing the Kilkenny one, right? And Kilkenny was the first time I had done anything of that length over like that period of time and i had no idea what to go in I, i'd never even run a marathon before right like i'd done a half before that oh, oh, solid. great man <laughs> definitely playing caboose today and the pemi was just a different mental challenge we got super lucky in the on the pemi loop like two weeks before or the weekend before it was snowing out with this group and that's why you have this group of guys that's going to do this type of stuff is you throw out sort of a challenge or you throw out this idea so we're like 8.8 .8 miles in everybody else was on board and i'm it's, not going to uh, be the one that's not on board <laughs> so, four in the morning. so here we are doing off i was up there you know shortly before we did the the pemi on the franconia ridge we stayed there for sunset but it gets a little dicey and having, you know, the, the more light you can get, the better, especially when you have, you know, a ton of rocks and trying to make sure you get good footing. Where I saw it was when I was, I did a uh, race around Mount St. Helens and a couple of people had that light and there's like the lava fields where it's just like tons of boulders and everything. And once the sun dropped, it was, it was dicey, but people that had that, it was really just kind of like, you know, you get your headlamp, it's good enough. That's what I had at the time. And it was kind of like, but seeing people where you just kind of like, everything's illuminated, really was a super help. Good job not walking off the cliff. This is pretty awesome, I love this stuff. There was that also that really cool point at night where I think it might have been me, you, and Nick, and we turned our lights off to actually get the full effect of the stars, and you could see like Lafayette towering above us, just a dark mound, and then this beautiful like kind of starlit night. It, yeah, it was incredible. There are points I remember we were up there, like, and it was kind of you know you're walking along, and you could you could. You know, you could be on a razor's edge or you could be on a, you know, 50 feet flat in either direction and you kind of don't know, but, you know, you, you want to be able to have that safety to catch before you kind of say, that nope, took one wrong, one step too many in that direction. That's windy here. Yeah. But it was fun up there in the, in the dark. How are you doing, buddy? Huh? Not feeling great. Oh, no. To be you, expected. You, I was just saying, like, yeah, to be expected in terms of 
it, we're at nine miles, you tend to hit your lowest at like 12 or 13 and then Right now the, the stomach, strong. and it, but oh. it's just because the legs were bothering me. Oh. And now it's working its way up through my system, so I just gotta... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, dude. Eh, don't. It's part of it. I think once the sun gets up and we warm up and like... That'll be a big boost. And I feel like we're moving swiftly during the night just to get out of the night. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll leave a couple hours so we'll start seeing sun, right? Because the first light will be in about an hour and a half. I knew it was going to be a long day coming into it, but then early on, I felt stomach trouble. All right, the wind has picked up. We're uh, nine and a half miles in, according to my watch. I couldn't eat. I could barely even drink. You can just hear on the microphone how much the wind is actually moving that whole time. Immediately, I felt like I was I was dragging the the people down, and, and that I, I feel like that gets into your head too. When when all of a sudden you're the slow guy on the totem pole, and you've been you're two two miles into a, a thirty plus mile event. Starting at night, there's nothing to there's the view isn't there, the trees aren't even there. It literally is a circle of rocks. You're stuck in this base just thinking about how hard it was. And that got to me. It took me a very, very long time to come back out mentally on the other side. There was multiple hours, Greg, that I, n I not considered I was looking for the place to drop. Top of Lincoln, baby. Is that our third 4,000 footer? Flume, Liberty Lincoln. Somebody's gonna struggle at some point, and it's like it. Nice. It's a long enough distance. It's just bound to happen, and it, it could be you, and it might not be you, but like nice. you're in it as a team, right? Four thirty. I can go for a coffee. I'll use that right up. Oh yeah. I wish, wish we could have a coffee. I think somebody either forgot the the jet boil or or the or the fuel or the coffee, like one of the things didn't make it. Then it just became a joke once <laughs> once yeah. we were up there. <laughs> Close to getting up to the top of Lafayette Falls. Uh, fake summit back there. Last time I had this on, but we're almost there. <laughs> it's almost there, guys. Woo. We are almost there. Nick, how's your stomach doing? Not good, I haven't eaten in like an hour. Once the sun comes up, hopefully it'll be. That's what I'm trying to be like. Just gotta get to a positive place. Yeah. You gotta sing like happy songs. <laughs> not a positive place. That's not a hip positive place. Five hours in. So I mean, we gotta be getting pretty close to. Yeah, it's no uh, hour. Right? I've done hour, hour. long events before. And I've had to go through many of difficult times, but this was by far the hardest point for me. How many miles do you guys have? I got 10.4. All right, my head is when you have too much time to think about it, you go through a lot of different options in your mind of ways that you can that you can drop out of that. Yeah, totally. It's big. Yeah, we got a third of this out of the way in darkness. Not bad. The last like eight miles are quote unquote easy. <laughs> Although untired legs and yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's what relative. There's multiple hours where I was, I was like 98% sure I was dropping. When you've got a core group of guys like we do, somebody will help you get through it too. Yeah, that sounds good. I feel like it, it's nice when you have a group because the ups and downs kind of are out of sync where you got like, when Lunger was having, you know, issues, we were kind of still a little fresh, so kind of people could bring him up and, you know, pep up the spirits a little bit. And then when you kind of have your lulls, somebody else is always there to do it, you know, to, to bring you up. 3.9, 3. I think, for Garfield. Campsite, 3.9. So this is Owl's head right here, we think, as Josh was saying, and then... We're going to be going along that ridge line up there and finishing down the bonds off in the distance. And we are at 
close to 12 miles hiked. Uh, 6.23 in the morning. <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. <laughs> It's your shot here. Like when we were halfway through, remember there was a point where I was like, or almost halfway through, where it's like, this is the last dropping point, and you basically go into the valley yeah. and you take a straight line for like eight miles back. Oh, oh, and I was yeah, like, yeah. I remember that. You it's might as well hard. go with these guys. They're probably going to beat you anyway. That's the thumbnail right there, Nick Longer. That's it. Got it. That was it. You, man. That's what we just did last night, yeah, huh? Isn't that crazy? We did that in the nighttime. Last night. You mean like. Yeah, we did it. You uh, mean this, this event, this... Two hours ago? That's Isn't it cool? It's just like that totally is cool. random. That yeah, is very cool. The valley walk. When you're on one of the peaks and you look and you're like, okay, so we've come from there and now we're going to go to there. Like, that's just a big chunk of land to cover in one spot. And coming down. What's cool about doing the super long hikes like that too is like you see that over the course of the hike. Whereas if even when you do like a 12 mile hike, generally how you start the day is how you finish the day. There's chances that the, the weather is going to turn on you. But like if it's a cloudy, rainy day, it's going to be most likely a cloudy, rainy day the whole time. Or if it's a beautiful bluebird day, you kind of go up and down and you really enjoy the view. Regardless of what's happening with the weather, like you may not be able to see miles, but it's going to be interesting. It was just like so crazy. Half of it is sort of makes it feel daunting, but the other half is like, oh, this is really cool. I can't wait to get to wherever that next peak is that, you know, I can see I can see it from here. I know it's 10 miles away, but that's that's a pretty cool like path to follow. And we had an awesome day. And so it was like this circle of mountains and then Owl's Head is just plopped right in the middle of it. I've hiked those trails before and this was different because we we're intending to use the hut as the water source coffee source poop source and like <laughs> you're like all right well we need to find a stable water source because otherwise we're not going to make 30 miles and there's water at the very beginning and there's water at the very end other than that you're on ridge line so there's not there's not a ton of options cool thing about it is you get to do research on other people's hikes people have done this recently you get to see what they did what they experienced whether a water source is a good water source or bad water source. I mean, fortunately for us, it wasn't like middle of the summer. So things that are questionable during the middle of the summer in October generally are not questionable. I think it was a little bit of a curveball though, when we found out the huts would be closed because we were, uh, you know, the water situation wasn't, uh, wasn't ideal, but we made it through it. 16 and a half roughly miles into this epic hike. And, um, this is the Gale Head Hut, which is closed. Up next is North Twin. I'm glad I took those 75 steps. Think it was worth it. Yeah, man. Is that where we're going? I, guess, right? I guess so, all right? Or here. No, but we, you know, because we're going back that way. So I think you're right. I feel like you had like five or six different adventures, you know, with different people at different times where you were at like a different part and that was just who you were talking with or who you were moving with. And that's where we finished down that way. There's the Galehead Hut. Making our way up this nasty bitch of a North Twin, South Twin. Man. This has been steep. Sean said this would be the hurt locker moment and man, this is tough. Unrelenting. That slog up the twin way was just dog shit. Just saw some hikers who said, still 10 minute hike to the top. 
Once you get up to the twin and you look back and you see how far you've come, you're like, it is, it's incredible. Oh, shit. Shut up. That was a moment that stuck out in my mind just because it kind of, it, it kind of got really ingrained in your, in your mind. You're just going up that, you know, rocky terrain for just so long. A few of us went over to West Bond or Bond Cliff or one of them. And, and I think you and Lunger went, went down and it was kind of cool meeting back up. And it was, it was, it kept being like a, like a shifting, uh, you know, who you're with and you're just having a good time. We had our moments that were split up and all together. Yeah. I mean, it was never like, yeah. it was never like separate for too long. It was always kind of like strung out. It was kind of like a, like a spring. It kind of got strung out and then kind of snapped back together. It's gorgeous, but yeah, the scale, everything, and never. It's a good looking uh, mountain top over there. There's a little meadow on the way up. Oh yeah, right there. Yeah. yeah. Sean so was saying, is you can't see civilization in any direction. That's right. That's right. You're right. You just all you see is other wilderness. I think a lot of people save the bonds for the end of the 48. That's how good they are apparently. Yeah. But yeah, I could see if, if you I get if you get this it. kind of view for a while. I mean, this is killer. Where? What? That little guy, like on the like straight off the corner. Really incredible. All right, so we started over there. It's insane how you see this huge horseshoe. You see that and you feel like, wow, I'm really accomplished. And then you have that 10 mile trek out, and you're like, shit, like this <laughs> is like it's got to be over. I've got to be within a mile. It's got to be five more minutes. Like it's five more minutes. It's like no, no, no. It's miles. Drink. Moving. Yep. We're getting we're picking Re up the pace a little bit. Relentless forward progress. My uh my GPS watch was telling me we were doing one point something. And then it and then when we were going uphill clearly slower, we we're saying we we're doing two point something, so oh yeah, that's not bad of you, huh? <laughs> it's just a long day. <laughs> and it's just like even if your fitness was there, by the end of it, it's um like your your oh. knees and the bottoms of your feet and your back, it just hurts. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter how much we train down here in Massachusetts. You know, you go up to the mountains, and it's just a different story. That amount of time on your feet, just on the rocks, right? It just like is exhausting. <laughs> Piped out out west, like um, up in the Cascades in Washington. I uh, hiked in out in Utah and some of the national parks, and they all have like something really cool and unique about it. It always takes longer than you think it's gonna. But I feel like it's just it different out here, where the mountains are. You know, you you you're kind of in the woods a lot, where you're really kind of going through these scraggly paths yeah. that are. Yeah. I feel like out west, it's a little more well laid out. Yep. The trails are better, you know, seems like somebody planned them a bit better. Like these were, you know, old paths that have been, you know, cut out for God knows how long. And, you know, you, you're not kind of doing these switchbacks where you're doing kind of any, you're kind of just going up these tough trails at times and rocky points and you get up there and get up on ridges and you just see green everywhere. 12.34 in the afternoon. And it's just really cool kind of to know, you know, we're, we're close to, you know, big cities, but, you know, within a couple hours, we can be, can be out in the, out in the wilderness. And it's, it's cool to know that that's there for us. And so I had never been on the east side of the loop before. So that, that view was cool for me because I had never seen that, but yeah, you can, you can just sort of like, map it out it's like a topo map come to life <laughs> there was one that was like a little offshoot yeah. um, that i think you and nick didn't do that the rest of us did 
that was cool because it was sort of, it was again like Owl's Head where we're sort of like plopped into the middle of it. And so we sort of walked it. It was almost like walking a plank and then you're like in the middle of all this stuff around you. So my watch has us at 21.2. 13 hours almost exactly. It's one o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Been hiking for, yeah, so you said 13 yeah. hours? Yeah. I've probably been in the hurt locker for about, I don't know, 12 <laughs> Yeah, it's been a long day, a long effort. Still got a lot of ways to go. Yep, we're gonna but, get up over that, back down into the valley, and then hike yeah. up. It's awesome, like this is where we started. How cool is that? Like yeah. that ridge, up over all of that. All that. Up over all that. All right. Way around, and then here. It is awesome. All right, 21 and a half. Nick and I are heading up the bomb cliff. You and I decided to go forward to give me a little bit of time so that like they could catch up because they were moving a little bit better. And ironically, as soon as we separated, I was like back into my normal self and we were we were moving. And actually, the, the silver lining of that was that you and I got to spend a little bit more time kind of enjoying Bond's clip, but we were there again in September. Um, the the foliage was just on point, which is the whole reason we went to do some peeping up on the ridge. Um, but it was, it was like my redemption moment. I felt good. The sun was up, it was warm. There was other people around. Sorry. It's such a huge loop with so much like variation of, of distance or difficulty or optional peaks or timing of when you start. And we saw so many different people out there, people who had done it much faster than us, um, were doing it much faster than us, and people who were doing it over three days, taking their time. That's where we just came from. The Pemi loop is just so long and it's meant for two days, uh, but plenty of people do it in one. Listen. the challenge of the logistics of making it happen when you're when you're exposing yourself to that many variables in what you're doing it just look at it like that as an adventure face value it should be like one of my least favorite days because i was miserable for 10 hours and like who looks at something where like a 10 hour chunk of your life you're miserable and you're like that was awesome like the devil invented running because the memory of the good sticks with you but you forget very quickly how bad it was We are heading up on cliff. I believe it's our last peak. Our last 4,000 footer, all downhill from here. So it's uh, 1.24 in the afternoon. We've been at it for a long time, but we're doing it. In September of 2020, we were still like six months into a, a pandemic. We hadn't even gotten into the hard part, ironically, yet now <laughs> looking in, in hindsight going into the winter. Um, and so to see people out enjoying life and like sort of this semblance of normalcy, it was it was a really bright spot for me. Um, and not even just on that day, but in, in all my big events, that's like I think about being on the Bonds Cliff, standing at the edge, looking over it and, and how just you feel you feel so privileged to be able to get there. And I say that everyone has access, but that doesn't mean everyone does it. Um, and not even everyone has access to just like be able to do that on a random day over the weekend. And, and to be physically capable of getting myself to a place to see that, um, I, I don't take it for granted. Just don't go too far. The Bonds is a special place. Like you can't see anything there that's that's man-made, and it is it is beautiful. You go out on Bond Cliff, and you're not afraid of heights, and you're just like, this is amazing. I know. I don't like those kind of heights. Right, the guys are right there. Should we just wait for them up here? Or should we just keep moving? I'm fine with whatever, man. They're gonna catch us anyway. So the cool thing is, it's like this is all East Coast stuff, which I feel like that. Like I talk to my buddies that are out west, and they 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 all have these stories of different things. It's like. Like, I don't know that you appreciate what we do have. I know it's only at 4,000 feet or it's only at 5,000 feet, but like it is, it's really cool. And people that are transplants will, will speak highly of it. It was a tough year, obviously for everybody. And just, I tried to get out into the woods as much as I could this year because it was, it just brought back this like sense of normalcy and the sense of calm. And, and honestly, when you're out there hiking, 
the pandemic was almost not in your thoughts because when you're camping, when you're hiking, you're really not surrounded by people. You're not in a crowd. You're just sort of out there in nature doing your thing. And so when we were out there, it felt normal. Obviously, when we were passing people, <laughs> you, had, you, you had to step to the side or you know, throw your buff on your mouth. You know what's funny is like, I thought that I liked the ocean for forever. Like that, that was, that was the spot that like kind of fed my soul. But I, I mean, skiing and hiking were always something that we did. And then we'd come back to the seacoast in New Hampshire and it was great. We all started coming up for the summer and doing more hiking and then just hanging out in rivers and hanging out at lakes. And you're like, this is, this is where like my soul feels at peace. But it changes every time you're out there. Based on where you are in the season, it's never the same. It's never the same, and that's that's just a cool thing. It was easy to get to the top of the bonds. It wouldn't be as special. Whereas when you're, you know, you have to kind of suffer through it, 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 it makes it better. Ironically, at the end is when I, I felt my strongest. It was a team effort. You guys were relentless on checking in trying to offer me food. Sean Patrick was like a, a free, like charity food bank, trying to get me to eat. Oh, uh, Nick, we got a runner. Oh, hey, I like know that runner. Yeah. How you doing, buddy? It was good. We are hoping to fill up at that stream. It was totally dry. Oh, there was a stream that we were supposed to get? Yeah, are you totally out of water? Yeah, but I'm, I'm okay. We, we get to the river soon. It feels a little bit more special to be out, out here than kind of out in other parts of the country. I mean, the Bond Cliff was where the best one. Yeah, yeah. That ascent down, down to Bond Cliff was brutal, man. Yeah. We did not, that was like Webster all over. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a little different kind of being close to home and knowing you yeah. can kind of explore all these trails and go in different places where you kind of make a trip somewhere and it's kind of like, oh, well, I got to I gotta figure out one or two trails I can do out here because I'm only here for a couple of days where you know you can kind of come back here and you can keep going back. You can do the same mountain six different times and it's always cool at different times. You're going different seasons. It's always a neat part of the whites. You know, it's nice to keep doing this. You know, this will, you know, this will be for you. You you were you did the Prezies and the the Pemi, so this will be your third. This will be my second with the group. We did like the other ones like Chikora or whatever, which were small. But you know, you want people to keep doing this and kind of keep this stuff going. This is a good place to soak your feet, but we still have like a mile plus, so you're not gonna want to take your trees off. The other thing that sticks out to me that was just grueling mentally was after we get down off all the mountains and we cross that first bridge, we've got, I don't know how long, but it felt like forever walking down that rail trail. How you doing, Rob? Not too bad, man. Happy to be done. Yeah. Or just about. Longo wants to do an extra mile just to make it a true 50K. Sure, yeah, we'll just start over. <laughs> All right, let's do it. You want to try that next challenge to understand where the line actually is. Like, what what are you physically capable of doing? But the other thing that I really enjoyed about this, and particularly this one, Going back to Kilkenny, we had just met everybody. We had that like weekend to kind of bond a little bit and kind of learn a little bit about each other. And I felt like coming into this one, we knew a lot more. And then we also had this epically long hike, 16 hours making conversation to really learn about each other. And like, there's that camaraderie of it. You're walking along that Lincoln Woods Trail, that, that slog out totally sucked. Yeah, this is a tough effort. This part is miserable. If I didn't do this slog out, I wouldn't have had that awesome adventure. You get to the end and you get to look back at it and just being amazed that we accomplished our goal, right? We got from point A to point B and so much happened in that time. So many little different things, so many different feelings, emotions, thoughts, like it was just crazy. I couldn't wait to finish it because I was miserable. And as soon as you finish it, you're sad. You sit down after it, you soak your feet in the river, you have an apple, and you go back to the campsite and you talk about the next one. Great. Good job, guys. Good Great job. effort. That was a solid, I am solid done running forever. <laughs> 451 in the afternoon.